Hello and welcome. Uh, in this lecture, we will assess or we will evaluate what to do with items that have got very low loading, for instance, a DC5 or for instance, DC2, for instance, EC5. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, almost all of them have got very low loading. So what do you do uh, with these items? And in this case, actually, since we had a CSR, which was a multi-dimensional scale, and then we obviously club them together. So it's pretty normal that when you club items that are actually, or that ha have actually dimensions. So if you club them together, the loadings would be obviously low. So let's say if we bought uh, any other data set, which we can uh, use and see if we can establish to that particular model. Okay, let's see. Okay, so let's see. Um, okay, let's see. This is let's make a new model uh, sample. Okay. And now in this model, we've got internal communication as a factor, which is influencing knowledge sharing. Let's rename it, right click, rename. So internal communication is actually influencing knowledge sharing. Yeah. Like them aligned, so okay. Let's draw our arrow and we get our measurement model. Yeah. Start okay. Let's see how is construct reliability and validity. Both of them are really good. So let's see how are the loadings. So you can see the loadings from here by clicking outer loadings, or you can go back to your model and have a look. So if you look here, all these items have got loading over 0 0.60. So all of them are pretty good. Now, how do, you, how do you calculate this AVE? So in this video, let's see, let's discuss how do we calculate AVE, and then we'll obviously do uh, look into what happens if you've got a problem with AVE. So let's say uh, we will do AVE for this IC. So what you can do in Smart PLS is just go to Auto Loadings. You press this Excel format button. So this is copied in an Excel format. And this is a small calculator that I have created to calculate AVE. You just paste the data from your Smart PLS to this Excel sheet. Now you can copy all these loadings and paste them here. So, okay, now this is slightly, okay. Now the, let's first discuss the formula. It's square of the loadings, sum of square of all the loadings divided by N. So you need to take square of this loading. So in order to do this, you just press is equal to, power and then select your loading raised to power two because it's a square and then you obviously can drag them and now the av value calculated is 0.591 and if you go back and see our model was 0.591. See, 0.591, it was rounded off to 0.592. So going back to our Excel sheet, if we have a look at our Excel sheet. Okay, now each of these loadings, first step is to take square of this loading. So the square of 0.63 is 0.397, so on and so forth. Then all these loadings are added together, divided by the number of items, which is eight. So the formula is you sum the squares and divided by the number of items. So the result is your 
average variance extracted, which should be greater than 0 0.50. Now, why it should be greater than, or why should why it's recommended that the loading should be greater than 0 0.70? Now, the reason being that if it's greater than 0 0.50, the overall AVE will fall to 0 0.50. That's how uh, mathematically, that's how it would work. For instance, let's say, let's change it to 0 0.70, 0 0.70, 0 0.70. So the overall, overall you will get a loading of 0 0.50. So that's why the recommended loading is greater than 0 0.70 actually. So this is how you calculate average variance extracted. Now, let, now let's let's uh, see a data set where you've got low loadings. Now, how do you tackle a data set where you have low loadings? So in order to do this. Let's assume we have this model where we are looking into the impact of uh, task conflict on team performance. Now let's run this model. Let's go to construct reliability and validity. And if we see we've got a low alpha, we've got low composite reliability, and we've got a low AVE value. Now, the first thing that one should do is look into the loadings. Now, if we see the loadings, TC1 is very low. It's in minus, while TC3 is 0 0.026. Now, they are very low. Now, let's delete one. And then let's say, let's run our model and see if things get well. You should always follow this procedure of stepwise deletion. So let's see the loadings still. It's very bad it didn't improve much so 0 0.039 let's remove this one as well and let's run our model okay Good. now we see that our av value and our team performance uh, both are reliable and valid but this is only for convergent validity so we have established convergent validity. The next step is to look into discriminant validity. Again, what we can do is we can use Farnan and Locker criterion. This is one of the criterion. I will be discussing the other criterion later. So the top value, which is the square root of AVE, should be higher than the underneath value. So this is higher. So we are only left with one variable. That's why there is no top value because it's only one correlation. So that's why it's not repeating. So task conflict. The square root of AVE for task conflict is greater than team performance. So that's how uh, it actually works. And these underlying values or values underneath are actually the correlation value. So the top value greater than the underneath values, which is the correlation, and the top value is the square root of AVE. So now this is, what is this 8.841? This is the square root of AVE for TP. But we have already established the correlation between TC and TP. So there is no value underneath. So there is no requirement to check the correlation again between TP and TC or because it's already checked. So that's why we don't need to have another value underneath. So once this is established, you can say, okay, yes, we've got our discriminant validity established. Thank you very much.